Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Tilly. Today is the last and final part of my hip surgery fiasco. I'm gonna pick up right where the other video left off, so if you haven't seen the first two videos, go ahead and click on them now and then come back and hang out over here. As always, if you're new here, remember to like and subscribe because we always love to see some support. Now let's get into it. So this video is going to start off about a year after my last video. I had been making some amazing progress in the gym. You can see some of these clips. This is how my squat was looking and how it was developing. The pinching pain that I had in my hips that was causing me so much agony had successfully been removed by the third surgery. So this means I had a better range of motion, although it wasn't completely restored back to where or back to where it was before all of the injuries. As a result of the third surgery, I was able to train a lot more. I was able to get quite strong. I I had hit a hundred kilo squat in the gym, which I think will come up in a second. And I was comfortably wrapping out 115, 120 kilo trap bar deadlifts. On the downside, the arthritis in my hip caused by the first failed surgery was still causing me astonishing pain. My hip was so intolerant to any amount of volume. So I couldn't really do hypertrophy training because my leg just couldn't hack it. I couldn't walk very far. I was tracking my steps for like a year and anytime I would hit over 3000 steps, I would have to spend the next few days in bed lying flat to try and recover. My leg was just limiting me in so many different ways. As a result, I was spending most of my time in bed because I was saving my leg for the things I needed to do like gym to try and help it recover or go to work. It was just a slog. And to be honest, I couldn't really imagine the rest of my life kind of living like that in an antisocial kind of just at home little bubble kind of thing. It came to a point where I was just in a really dark place and I didn't really want to be around because it was just a lot and it was painful. My friends were disappointed in me because I never really saw them. I felt so bad for Callum because he was spending so much time with me at home that he wasn't really living his best life. Everything just felt a bit stagnant, even though it wasn't actually. I mean, I was doing my masters at the time. Things were still getting on, <laughs> but it was COVID as well. So I guess everything kind of compounded. We had Zoom calls with a surgeon because I still had screws in my hip from the third surgery that needed to come out at some point. And on one of those Zoom calls, my mom advocated for me massively and was just like, at what point do we just give Tilly a hip replacement? Like, I know she's young and it's probably not the best idea, but right now she's not really living. She's just existing and in pain. The surgeon actually said, yeah, you're completely right. So we can do a hip replacement when we come down to take the screws out. And so I was booked in and I felt happy, I guess. I don't know, nervous obviously because it's another friggin' surgery to go through, but something was gonna change. And it wasn't like this was the only solution. I'd been doing physio, I'd been gymming consistently throughout this whole period of recovery. I wanted to set myself up in the best possible position for this next surgery. The original date of the hip replacement was actually also canceled because of COVID. There was another wave in Melbourne. And so we had to postpone it a few months. And then the date was set on March the 8th, 2022, which is my lovely partner Callum's birthday. The surgery that I ended up having was a total hip replacement on my left hip, the screw removal, and I had a cortisone shot on my right hip to try and prevent that from worsening into what the left hip was like. Here are some videos of my journey as we flew down and then into the surgery. We are sitting at the airport, waiting for the plane, and we're all very depressed that we're leaving people at home. What are we doing? Waiting. How are we feeling? Sad. So at the moment, we are walking to the surgeon. We're gonna find out what's happening tomorrow and find out I don't know, I'm very nervous, but I think that's to be expected. And we're going on a long walk. It's like a half an hour walk to the hospital, which I guess is not that long. But for me, considering the activity that I've been doing recently, or in the last few months leading up to this, it's a pretty long walk, so I'm a little out of breath. So we'll update you afterwards. But yeah, I don't know, very nervous, but I'm excited for this to finally be done. What do you think, Mom? Yes, I'm excited. I'm finally here. It's finally happening. Finally happening. That's right. We will check in soon. So we've done the rat test and we're just waiting for the response. I am not being very patient. Mom is eating in the kitchen, making me very jealous because I can't eat. <laughs> and we're just waiting. I'm just watching some Brooklyn Nine-Nine and we'll see what happens. I might go back to sleep to try and make the day pass quicker. We'll see. Hello. 
she's back. She's the three hour operation, an hour in recovery or so. By yeah. all accounts, it went well. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I've asked mom to calmly please open my water bottle and she's putting her whole body weight behind it to try and do that. The strength training's not working. I know, the strength training's not working. Thank you so much. <laughs> Gonna have some sushi. I've got this thing on my legs that's like squeezing it so that it just keeps moving because I can't feel anything below my hips right now. I've got a catheter, my crutches, IV bag. Yeah, whoops, sorry, but we'll see. Nails still look good, that's a plus. <laughs> Gonna have some food oh, now, that, see ya. This is as much movement that I have in my toes right now, <laughs> in my body, just a little wiggling. Hopefully that will improve throughout the night. This is my wiggle update. Much more movement. Mm. Look at this. Yeah. Okay. I'm really tired. Uh, everything is annoying me. My leg is aching. I hate having this IV drip in my hand. The catheter is so uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's not really fun being in hospital. And so I had the operation, as you guys have just seen. The surgeon said that everything went well, except get this. They found yet another f***ing stitch from the first surgery in Hong Kong. It was floating around lower down in my leg around the actual muscle. Like what the f***? They also found way more scar tissue as a result of that first surgery. And the surgeon said it completely made sense why I was in so much pain. It felt good in that moment, to be honest, because it's like you've finally been validated after being in pain for so long and having had so many different doctors tell you that there's nothing that they can do and there's nothing wrong. Finally having someone be like, yeah, this is <laughs> They also said that I have the same underlying issue in my right hip. However, we're not gonna touch that with surgery until it becomes painful. So that's why I had the cortisone shot just as a preventative measure and I'm probably gonna need another one soon. But anyways, as of about right now filming this video, I am about five months post-op. Things are going well. I mean, I was in the gym about a week after my hip replacement, spent a week in hospital and then straight into the gym. Things were different this time around. This was by far the easiest surgery I had had to recover from. And now it's just all about building that strength back up and some of the range of motion still needs to come back. Things are still a bit tight in there. I'm able to walk, like I walk 20 or so minutes to the gym every day and then 20 minutes back and that just wouldn't have happened before this operation. I feel like I'm able to live my life to a fuller extent and I'm able to be a happier version of myself because I'm not complaining about my leg all the time. My life is completely different and I'll be forever grateful to that Australian surgeon for taking me seriously and for my friends and family for sticking it out with me. Not that they really had a choice, but thank you. Also just wanted to say an extra special thank you to my mom for traveling with me and being around for the whole of the four operations. I love you and I'm very grateful for you. I actually wanted to show you guys the screws that came out of my hip because I framed them. These are the actual screws that were in my hip. So they're like the size of my face. So they were like here. Super weird. There's a hand for comparison.
Also, as of right now, I'm kind of in the process of getting back into running. So I'm working with physio, I'm doing my plyometrics, and hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to try a light jog and see how that feels, which I am just stoked for. I am excited to be doing some friggin' running. <laughs> I'll probably show you guys that as well because I wanna keep a record of it so I can look back and see how far I've come. In terms of strength training, I've been mainly prioritizing hypertrophy for the last couple of months, but at the end of this current program, so in about three weeks time, I'm gonna move into a strength block and then see how much weight I can actually move. About a month ago, I roughly tested my deadlift and I'm probably about 97 kilo one rep max. So, I mean, we're getting there. I'm coming for that 200 kilo deadlift. <laughs> But yeah, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for listening. If you made it this far, well done. If you've been through anything like this, let me know down below. Thank you all for listening. Have the most amazing week ahead. And I hope you know that whatever you're going through, you guys can get through it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Make sure to like and subscribe. Okay. <laughs>